we're going to be having a look at today is a really useful area uh, that we get asked about a lot, which is about content locking. By that, we mean controlling the learner's journey through the course. So, for example, that the learner can't just click next repeatedly to skip through the screens. You want to make sure that maybe they watched a video or looked at all of the steps in a film strip and so forth. But also uh, to have a look at uh, how we guide the learner at a higher level, at the menu level, about uh, which topics they can access when. So, for example, we want to stop them being able to access the assessment topic until they've looked at all the learning topics. And we can do that using a technique which uh, we use quite often in these sessions, a technique called display conditions, where we can show and hide things on the screen based on certain things happening. And the conditions we'll be looking at today are to do with uh, whether the screen is complete, whether the learner's finished everything on the screen but also whether a particular topic has been completed so let's uh, let's jump straight into gomo and uh, have a look at how we do that by the way do feel free to use the question panel and go to webinar there just uh, pop in either questions or comments that go through and i'll try and monitor that and make sure that i answer those so let's go and log into to GOMO and get going. So the first thing to point out, of course, is that GOMO is entirely cloud-based. So you don't install any software. All you need is a browser and internet connection. As you can see today, I'm on a Mac and I'm using Safari, but of course I could be using Chrome on a Mac, or I could be on, on a Windows PC using Edge or Chrome, or basically whatever your platform and browser is, then GOMO should work with that. I'm going to go into uh, my team account here. And then when I log into the team account, I can see the courses that the team can work on, organized into folders, maybe by team member or subject area there. But let's also now go straight in. And on the left-hand side, I'm going to build a new course. Let's have a look at that whole process. And then we're going to take the sample content that Goma gives us, do a bit of editing of that, and then in particular, look at locking the content. So Goma asked me a few questions to get me up and running. Remember, we can change all of this later. So I'm going to just call this, when my keyboard wakes up, screen and topic locking, for example. Uh, also bear in mind that Gomo's got great features to help you create a single course and making it available in multiple languages. It will track as a single course in your LMS. And the learner is free just to switch between the languages as they move through the course. So you don't have to create different language versions and somehow glue them all together. And uh, I cover this in, in another of these, these sessions. So do look out, out for that. But in particular, the exciting thing is we're just introducing AI-based translation as well. And um, first of all, to be able to uh, translate individual assets like text and accordion and so forth. But um, by the end of the month, we hope to release entire course translation. And that works via your own open AI account. So uh, look out for announcements for that. And uh, you can also try it out yourself in GOMO uh, if you have an open AI account set up. Today, I'm just going to make it a single language course. Now, this is about selecting uh, the theme, the style template that's going to give our course branding. And um, again, we cover this in another session, but essentially the theme encapsulates your brand in terms of the correct fonts and colors and so forth. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take the new Ponzi thing that we're about to release. So uh, those of you GOMA customers will see this appearing in your account shortly and uh, I can then edit that. So this is about the structure of the course, and this is important for today's subject. That um, So a GOMA course consists of these top-level building blocks, which we call topics. So if I was designing a program for onboarding new hires for the business, I might have a topic about the company's history, uh, something about the company's products and services. I might have an assessment in there. So those would be topics, and in turn, those topics are broken down into a sequence of screens. And we're going to be having a look at uh, sequencing those screens and locking those screens, as well as locking the, the topic. So here I'm going to say I want an introduction, I want a menu, and I'm going to say, okay, I've got three learning topics start. I can add as many as I like later on. These are the elements which appear in the toolbar, so they'll always be available to the learner. Here I'm going to take the defaults today. I don't need to make this uh, add in a language selector, it's not multi-language, and so forth. 
So I'll just click create. So GEM is going to look at those initial decisions, particularly what's relevant here is the number of topics. It's going to create an outline structure for me. It's going to put in some sample content that we're going to use today. So this is my top level bird's eye view here. I've got an introduction topic leading to a menu. I have simple branching here, but remember that we can have more complex branching. So I could have uh, subtopics here. I can have uh, what we call dynamic branching or adaptive learning as some customers let's call it so popular example when the learner comes into the course you prompt them to select their job role or job function gomo can remember that choice in a variable and again using this display conditions technique then what the learner sees on any given screen or even their whole journey through the course will depend on the choices they made so it's the same course it's just looking and behaving differently depending on learner choices i can immediately go in and just preview this let's see how this all hangs together at the moment with the default content so I choose actions preview it's going to open up another tab here it's going to apply that theme the new ponte theme here so uh, uh, here things like that blue tool toolbar that's coming from the theme i can change that theme editor, I could change the fonts, could change the uh, the button color and the fonts used there. I'm going to go into the menu. It's generated menu buttons for me linking into uh, the different topics. Now note at the moment that I can actually access the topics in any order. I'm free to click on those menu buttons in whatever order I want. And that's what we're going to be having a look at about how to control that a bit later on. I'm going to go into the topic here. And here we can see that we've got uh, this column layout. We've got two columns here. And Goma uses this block and column layout to make sure that this content will automatically run across any screen size, any device, any orientation. So you don't need to build a desktop version, a tablet version, a smartphone version. And we can check that out here at the top left. I can have a quick check to say, what would this look like on a, on a tablet? What happens if we rotate, say, our iPad? We can see it still fills the screen there. But if I go down to smartphone, all it does is simply reflows those columns. It still completely fills the screen. I'm not having to pinch and zoom. And it just goes into this nice app like view. Notice that the navigation has moved to the top there. And here everything goes into this app like view. So I can immediately see that whether the learner's on a smartphone or a tablet or a desktop, they're going to get a good experience. Uh, but also we're going to note that we can just we're just free to navigate through this content we want to control that journey through the topic so let's go back in here let's go and open up on this topic so i'm going to click on this topic here it opens up another tab this will take us to the editor view so here on the left hand side we have the navigator panel this shows me the screens that i have in this particular topic i can jump to a different topic to edit and Gomez put it into the sample content as we saw in the preview. When it loads the content in the content area here, uh, the two important things, there is no canvas size to this. It's not an 1800 pixel canvas. I'm not having to nudge this text to be 100 pixels from the left because that might work on a fixed desktop size, but it's going to be pretty hopeless by the time we shrink it down to smartphone. So of course, instead we work in this block and column layout. So here I've got a block. When I click on it on the right hand side, we can see that I can divide that into columns. And as we saw in the preview, that's how Gomez is going to decide how to reflow across different screen sizes. Also, I don't need to worry about fonts and colors and so forth when I'm editing. I simply focus on the learning content and my theme will take care of the rest. So I can go into this instant preview. I can go into this split mode here. So when I'm editing here, there's no font button. Instead, I just choose a style and how that's going to appear in terms of fonts and colors and so forth depends on how it's set up in my brand theme. So I'm immediately on brand here. So I can just I welcome that. And I can see immediately what it's going to look like in my instant preview. But I hear I could say, well, actually, I don't want to have an image there. So let's get rid of that. And let's put in some of our own content. So all the things you can add into a cover screen are what we call assets. On the left-hand side here, I have my assets panel. 
and it's divided into these categories. I can add in MP3 audio, MP4 video. I can embed content, say, from YouTube or Vimeo. Wide ranges of these presentation assets. Of course, we've got basic things like text and images. But we've also got all these pre-built interactions like film scripts and carousels and comic scripts to show sequences of images and associated text. Interactive images like hotspot image, image markers, so the learner could click on different parts of an image maybe to get uh, more information. And then uh, also here, we have a wide range of question types as well. So uh, from uh, basic things like multiple choice select from list to sort of interactive versions of those and things like drag and drop text input. But whatever we want to add in, all we do is just say, I'm going to add in some video here, drag and drop that in there. Gomo already gives us some sample content, so I can see the way the video player works here. That's fine. I can see the way this works. We have the progress bar and so forth. Of course, I want to put in my own video. So all I have to do is click. And if I haven't uploaded my video already, I just drag and drop my MP4 file in there. And right here for speed, I'm just going to use one I uploaded from my iPhone. So good news is Gomo can be used as this simple drag and drop tool. We don't need to do anything else there. Here's my video. Here we are in Brighton on the south coast of England. But the important thing is you get a lot of control over all these different elements. So, for example, here, when I click on the video player, on the video player on the right, the properties there, this is where I can put my video transcript. But importantly here, for example, I could switch off the progress bar so the learner can't just skip through the video. Um, or to sort of beginning to sort of control uh, learner uh, progress through the topic here. The problem is, if we go into the preview here, OK, so we don't have the progress bar, so I can't just scrub through it. But notice down here at the bottom, we've got our next button. So I can just choose to skip over the video onto the next screen. And that's not the behavior we want. In this case, I'm going to say I'm going to be really strict. I want the learner to watch all of the video before they move on to the next screen. Of course, whether you choose to do this or not is, is up to you in terms of being learning designers. But uh, we do get a lot of requests for being this strict about it. So what we need to do is to have a look at adding in a sort of condition to that next button. When do we want to display the next button? And we do that by on the right hand side, we look at the screen properties. I just scroll down there, right down to the navigation and tracking section and just click on that and here we go we've got the it labeled here about the next button now we don't want to switch off the next button altogether because we do want the learner to be able to move on eventually and if i just switch that off even when the video finishes they wouldn't be able to move on instead we want to tell gomo the conditions under which we want to show that next button so just click on that to add a display condition wide range of different display conditions and we cover these in different uh, sessions each week but the really useful one we're going to use here is called screen status and what this does is monitor a screen in this case i'll say screen one and gonna just checks what an, what's on that screen and whenever everything that's on the screen that can be interacted with is finished it will mark the screen as complete. So we can pick up that completion notification. And we don't need to know whether it's got a video or a film strip or whatever. All we want to know is, is has the learner done everything on that screen? Is the screen complete? If so, show the next button so we can move on and just apply that. So let's just check how that now works. I'm going to go back into my preview. OK. Here, I can't scrub forward. I have to watch the video. Fortunately, it's not too long. But notice here at the bottom, there is no next button here. I can't move forward at all. So it's going to wait for the video to finish, which will happen in just a moment. So the video is finished. This screen is now complete because there's nothing else I can interact with here. Therefore, that display condition triggers. And now I can choose to move on. But we can apply that to any type of screen. So here on the second screen, that we've got uh, an accordion, an accordion asset here, where the learner has to do some interaction here. 
And here I'm going to say, well, I don't want just to be able to skip over this, that um, there's important stuff in this accordion. So I want to make sure that they're going to look at all of that before moving on. So what I'm going to do here, go back to the editor. I'm just going to add in a blank screen so there is somewhere afterwards to move on to. And all I do is exactly the same, that I just look at the properties of the screen, go to the navigation tracking section, and again, I add a display condition to the next button. And again, I use screen status, looking at screen two this time. And I select exactly the same thing to say, well, when this screen is complete, show the next button. And again, I don't need to know what's on this screen. I could have not only an accordion, but a film strip as well, and a video, and the learner would have to look at all the steps in the accordion and the film strip and watch the video before it's complete. But let's just check how that works now. So again, notice here that um, I can't move on. I start to interact. I still can't move on. That's because there's still more for me to do. And now I've looked at all of the steps in the film strip. So now I can move on here onto the next screen. So really useful just adding that screen status display condition to the next button. That enables you to lock those screens. Uh, I'm just going to go back here and I'm actually going to be less strict with myself here because I'm going to go to the video and say that I can actually use the progress bar to move through. It's just it's going to help us in a moment as we begin to test uh, topic locking here. So I'm just going to save that. So, so far, we've got this topic. We've got three screens and we've locked the screen so that you have to watch the video. Then you have to interact with all of the accordion. Let's just close that. So now let's go and have a look at uh, the menu locking, because we saw in that preview that I was able to click on those menu buttons in any order. But there are times when you want to control that. So what I'm going to do is just open up the menu topic. And we've got our, go to preview here, we've got our three menu buttons there. So the first case I want to look at is that we're just going to simply sequence this to say, OK, you can look at topic one first, but you can't do topic two till you've looked at the whole of topic one. And you can't do topic three till you've looked at the whole of topic two. So this general sequence of, of, of content at the menu level. And we do that by using display conditions again. So content topic one, well, we always want that to be available, so we don't need to put a condition on it. But for content topic two, I can say, let's go and add a display condition to the menu button itself. So we're not doing this at the screen level. We're attaching a condition to the object, in this case, the menu button. So I click on the right-hand side, add a display condition. Now, this time, the one that we're going to use is another useful one called topic completion. We're almost going to monitor the completion of the topic that's attached to the menu button. And a topic marks itself as complete when the learner has visited every screen in that topic. So here I'm going to say, show this second menu button for the topic two. When topic one, so it lists all the topics in my course, when topic completion is true, basically when topic one is complete. So show that. And we can do the same for the content topic three button. So again, let's add the, so the same display condition in that we're monitoring topic completion, but this time we're monitoring completion of the previous topic, topic two there. So we should only see the topic three button and be able to get into content topic three when topic two is complete. So let's just go and see how this works now. So I'm just going to do a preview here of the of the course from this point. It's just going to do a rebuild there. Just while it's doing that, we'll just uh, have a quick recap there. So we've got three menu buttons. If we don't do anything else, as we saw, they'll all be available, and I can click on any of them in any order. We've started to sequence these by adding display conditions, say that only show the second menu button once the first topic is complete, and only show the third one when the second topic is complete. So here we go, let's go in here. So here we've only got the menu button for content topic one. So that's the only thing I can access here. Okay, it takes me into here. Again, I can't move through this. So we're now at the screen locking level. This is why I just uh, 
slightly unlocked it so I can do the progress bar there. So it should come to the end of the video. That screen's now complete. I can move on. This screen is locked because I need to look at all the steps in the accordion. Now I can move on. Third screen. Go back to the menu. Topic one is now complete. So that display condition is triggered to say now show topic two. I can go in there, just two dummy screens in there. At the top, go back to the menu. I've now completed topic two, so it now unlocks topic three. So this is quite a useful mechanism, but let's refine this a bit. You might have noticed the problem with this is that when the learner first comes into the menu, all they see is that first menu, uh, that topic one button. So they have no idea how much content is actually in the course, the fact that there are, in this case, topic two and topic three. So they might not know how much time to allow for the whole thing. So we can refine this a bit by displaying locked menu buttons. So I'm going to go back in here to the editor for that uh, menu topic. What I'm going to do is, this is the simplest way to do it, I can just add in, I'm going to add in here another menu button. I'm going to label this as content uh, topic two, but I'm now just going to label it as being blocked. So just an easy indication there. So there we go. And here I can do the same. I'm going to do the same for topic three. So I'm going to add one in there. Just add in the label content topic three locked. Uh, which is fine there. What I can also do, notice that we've got these estimated times. Now, Goma doesn't automatically calculate the time, so that's up to you as learning designers. Typically, learning designers, say, allow one minute per screen. So I'm just going to add in those times to the locked ones so the learner knows how, how long to allow. Uh, there we go. So now what I need to do is to add in display conditions to these. When do we actually that should say it's a silly mistake there obviously i want that to say locked rather than unlocked so this is the locked version and also that's the locked version so if we want to tell the learner that it's uh that it's locked and we'll just go back there put that back in there Okay, so we've got locked versions. So let's add some logic to this. When do we want to show the locked version? We had display conditions for this. Again, we use the topic completion again. And we're saying, look, on the second one, as long as topic one isn't complete, so topic completion is false. So if topic one isn't complete, show the locked version of topic two. So they know there's something there, but they can't get to it. Same on the topic three locked one. Set a display condition. Topic completion. This time we're monitoring topic two. So as long as topic two, uh, completion is false, meaning we haven't completed topic two, show the locked version of the menu button for topic three. And also, I don't I don't attach any actions to this button. We don't want the locked buttons to do anything. That's the whole point. They're just there for a visual representation, so the learner knows that there is something there. So let's just go back here. Let's just do a refresh and uh, rebuild our menus. And let's see whether I've got the logic right here. So now if I've done this right, I'm expecting to see a content topic one menu button, which is unlocked by default, but then to have two menu buttons. Here we go. Oh, seem to have missed the label there. Right, let's just quickly, let's just quickly make sure I save those changes. Otherwise it's going to look a bit strange. Okay. Let's check we've got them saying locked, that's it. Let's just do a quick rebuild. Now, now this time, if <laughs> again, if I've edited that right, should have content topic one always unlocked. Two buttons saying content topic two locked, content topic three locked. That's better. So notice here, I can't click on those, but I know there's something there. So now I go into topic one. Let's skip through the video. Now I can move on to the next screen. I need to click on both steps of the accordion. Now I can move on to the third screen. Back to the menu. I've now completed that, so I can now go into topic two. Notice I still can't get to topic three because we've put the display condition there. So complete this, that second topic. 
I've now completed topic one and topic two, so now it lets me get to topic three. So that's a, a, a nice way to be able to sequence your menus, to, to uh, menu buttons to guide the learner through. Just finally, uh, just a word about uh, putting in some more interesting logic in here. That I might decide that, um, say, topic three is the assessment. And I want to lock the assessment, say, I don't want the learner to be able to do the assessment until they've completed all the learning topics, but they could actually do that in any order. So, for example, if I label this as assessment, so here's my assessment topic. And now the logic I could put onto this is to say, only show the assessment if topic two is complete and topic one is complete. So here we're using the logic that also all of those must be true. So topic one is complete and topic two is complete. They can do it in whatever order they want because we can take off the locking on the on topic two and then only show that. So what I do there is just take off the display condition from there and so forth. And we don't have a lock on topic two. So they can simply do, they could start with topic one, then, then topic two, then do topic one, but they won't be able to get to the assessment. And to, because of this compound logic that we've put on there to say, topic one is complete and topic two is complete, then show the assessment. So that kind of logic can be really powerful with the display conditions using the, the and logic and the or logic there that, um, just bear that in mind if you're thinking of these interesting learner journeys through there, that you do have the power of the display conditions and the logic here on them to be able to get the kind of path that you need.